Hello, 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 and welcome again hey. to War Room Conversations. Hey, everybody. What's going hey, on? Hey, everybody. Everyone, as you know, um, my name is Kenny Garcon. I am the co-chair of the Capital Ballroom Council. And to my, uh -uh, there we go, <laughs> to, to that <laughs> side. <laughs> I'm Dante Brown Balenciaga. I am the other co-chair of the Capital Ballroom Council. Hello, everybody. I am Jamil Khan, and I am the community engagement coordinator for the Capital Ballroom Council. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So how's everyone been doing? How y'all went a couple of weeks? Swell. Swell. What about you, Dante? Can't complain. Um, I was hoping for some more snow this week. I've been enjoying being <laughs> off from being in the office because it's snowing so I can work from home. But I think that's <laughs> over with. So... <laughs> No That's shade. I was hoping for some more snow too. <laughs> I was definitely hoping for some more snow, but you know, it had to end sometime. Of course um, it did. So, um, what's going on this month? Of course, you know, this is Black History Month. So we wanted to bring you all a conversation around ballroom history. Um, um, in addition to that, it's also um American Heart Awareness Month. Um, everyone knows, I put it publicly that I suffer from a um, hereditary heart condition, heart disease. And um, I recently underwent surgery. So that's why I got my good old, I am battery operated shirt now. Oh, the bionic man. I am the bionic man. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, just, you know, everyone take care of yourself, take care of your heart. Um, so yeah, this is Black History Month. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to introduce our panelists, our esteemed panelists. Esteemed. Esteemed panelists. Oh gosh, I'm trying to do, I don't know what order we should go in. Um, Let's start with Dante. Pick a picky <laughs> person. Who do you want to start us? Who do you want to start us with? Jamel said let's start with somebody, so let Jamel go ahead. <laughs> okay. Well, I, uh, well, let's start with Twiggy. Let's start with Twiggy. All right. All right. Bring into the screen. Hello, Twiggy Poochie Garcon. Hello, hello. Hold How on. are you? Have so the engineers. <laughs> It's been a little while. <laughs> it's just for a little while. All right. So the intros. So uh, what I want you to do, just so everyone can get to you know know a little bit about each of you, um, and everyone um is in the green room is gonna get the same question. So what year did you discover ballroom, and what is your current ballroom status? Uh, I was discovered. By someone in ballroom, Shushu Mizrahi, shout out to Shushu, um, in Virginia in 2004. And I am legendary for between European runway. Come on, runway. All right. Next up on the screen, father icon. <laughs> <laughs> you're muted. Oh, you're muted. Um, welcome to the panel. Hello, you... hello, hello. <laughs> what year did you discover ballroom and what is your ballroom status? Um, I discovered ballroom in uh, 89, 90. I didn't go to my first ball until 91. Currently, I am an icon for realness. An icon legend for realness, yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Welcome to the panel. Thank you for having me. No problem. Next up, if you, if, you, if, you, if you know him, you know him. The next person is Mr. Alvernian Prestige. Avernian, welcome. What's going on? How are everybody doing this evening? <laughs> good. Good, good, good. All right, so same question. What year did you discover ballroom, and what is your current ballroom status? Um, I discovered ballroom about 87, and I am an icon and the pioneer of the Philadelphia ballroom scene. Come through, pioneer. And, you know, I love Twiggy. I love James. I love Avernian. But we did save the best for last. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> Bring it to the screen. <laughs> Racine <laughs> Pendarvis. <Ooh. laughs> How are you? <laughs> I am blessed. Thank you, my beloved. <laughs> um, so, same question for you. What year did you discover ballroom, and what is your ballroom status? Um, the first time I ever went to the ball, a ball, I went with two of my cousins. In 1968 was the very first time I ever went to a ball. Wow. Stop that. <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> no lying, no bag. <laughs> Stop that. 
So, um, and I actually went, and at the time, my cousin used to compete. They used to have categories, dance categories, for uh, ballroom dancing in ballroom. And uh, my cousin would compete, and I had no idea that these were transsexuals until I just started to take note that some that these were awful large women so then i realized oh i love this space so later on i was introduced to avis who was my mother who went to school with my cousin who was from washington dc born and raised and i it was introduced to the house of pendarvis and then i would start walking because i was a gender blender i would walk uh uh butch queens and drag big girl butch queen and drag um, and then I created a category called Fag Out, which became so much, I created that. You because created that. There was no category for fat, those who called themselves at the time faggots, you know, so mm -hmm. who were not in drag, who were not transsexual, but who were two-spirit or gendered, non-gender conforming, or what we called them of the day, sissies. So mm -hmm. I was a sissy. And I created Fag Out, and and it just became this, blew up and became its own thing. And then they told me because I was so cunty and saw <laughs> that I could not walk anymore in Fag Out that I had to watch Butch, Butch Girl, Big Girl Runway Models Effect. So I would walk all the time. And my nemesis who would always sit me down was Erica, God rest her soul, Erica Revlon. Mm. That big girl would slay the runway. But one year, I spreaded her. And one year, she would win grand, and I would win first. One year, I set mother down. <laughs> and I won grand, and, I, and she won first. But it was that kind of love that I always had, that you always had a love for someone who was your nemesis, who you walked against, that you was given one day, one mm -hmm. day. And it was given that kind of love. So then I'm an elder in the community. I, I don't like the terms, uh, you know, so many people throw away, throw out legendary and I'm icon and I'm this and that. You know, we're all legendary because we live through 2020. So let us all be legendary. So I like to say I'm an elder in the ballroom because I am. True to Thank you. Thank you. Oh, wow. I didn't know you did that. See, you just gave us a little piece of history. You know, you can tell that you're from old school because of the words that you use. Oh, <laughs> old school words. Um, thank you so much. Oh, this is great. This is great. All right. So I'm going to move on. Let me, well, let me look in our chat group. Let's see. So we have, let me see. Monty, hello. Monty saying hello to everybody. Hi, Monty. Hey, nice to meet you. Hello, my. Hey, Monty. Hey, my. Hey, Felix. Felix. Anthony Oaks. Anki. Hey, Anki. Uh-uh. Um, Felix, does he love the, car the category? Um, yeah, we are. We are. We are getting all the people are get giving y'all, shouting y'all which love. This is, this is, this is, this is, this is All awesome. right, DJ Lucky. DJ Lucky, <laughs> yes. All right. So let's dive into our questions because I'm sure everybody wants to know. Um, so let's see. First question that we have is what made you decide ballroom was for you? Who wants to go first? Anybody? All right, let's go. Go ahead, Alfred. Are you racing? Are racing gonna go? I'll go first. Um, I decided it was for me because it was a safe space. And it was a safe space created by people that looked like me, that celebrated me, and I knew this is where I belonged. I knew this was my tribe from the very first moment I walked in. So that's what made me decide that Baldwin was for me. Awesome, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Avernian, I know you wanted to go next. All right, so uh, for me, I decided that Ballroom was for me in 1990 uh, when I created the House of Prestige. Um, it was a sense of me having my own family as a teenager and that bond and that connectivity. So I wanted, I was in other houses before I created my own, but when I created my own, I felt like I was there, that this was my space and my opportunity. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Um, who wants to go next? 
All right, Twigs. Yeah, I'll go. Um, I, the year that I first started walking malls was the same year that I was asked to leave my church because of my femininity and my sexuality. And so for me, ballroom became this place where um, I learned a new family and met a community that like accepted the parts of myself that I was told shouldn't exist. Um, and to really actually not just accept, but to help me affirm those parts within myself and to celebrate who I am. And ever since then, it's just been um, the place that I call home. Awesome, thank you for sharing. And last but not least, Father James. Um, I think ballroom, because I would see everybody voguing on the pier or in the clubs and stuff, and then I would see cliques of people and how they dressed and who dealt with whom, you know, during those times, it became very interesting to me. So I wanted to get into it. And when I seen the old way, I wanted to walk the old way, actually. Mm -hmm. And when I seen the people voguing, I was like, oh, I want to do that. You know, so <laughs> that, that's what um, made me wanted to get into ballroom and see the the, the the fun that people will have together as friends, you mm -hmm. know, because I was 15 and it was only me and my cousin. We didn't really have no friends. We were meeting people along the way, but this is where the crew was at. So I'm going to be where the crew was at. Mm. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So um, I want to go into a little bit about the origins of ball. Right. And each one of you was selected for different reasons because each of you represent a different aspect of ballroom. Like so the next question is, um, can you tell us the origins of ballroom? And I want to start off with Twiggy because Twiggy is one of the is the youngest person on the panel. However, um, Twiggy, I know I've done work with him, done work with them, and um, I know that they have a very good in-depth knowledge when you talk about the origins of ballroom. So I wanted to invite Twiggy here to share your knowledge of the history of like ballrooms starting. Sure. I mean, the quick and dirty is that folks have recollections and people have written about ballroom and balls happening as far as, far back as the late 1800s. However, most folks date the origins of the drag ball scene, um, which birthed the house ball scene to the 1920s. Um, there's even folks like Langston Hughes in the chapter in his autobiography called Spectres of Color, um, where he explicitly mentions ballroom happening during the 1920s and 30s in Harlem. And so mm. it was born out of resistance to transphobia and homophobia from the Black church. Um, black queers in Harlem created this safe space for themselves, um, not only to perform, but really to um, live in their truth. So exactly what, um, my grandmother already seen that earlier. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Thank you, thank you. Um, so now I want to go ahead and go down the corridor. Um, I'm going to toss it over to James to talk a little bit about New York ballroom history. Well, for me, of course, I wasn't out back then, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, from 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 my recollection of or the stories that I hear about ballroom, the ballroom that we know today drives from you know, Crystal and Lottie Dottie, um, who was one, the two founders of the House of La Beja and wanted to create something for themselves, for Black and Latina uh, community because of the shade with the trans um, population, the, the Caucasian population and the beauty pageants and stuff, right? So they created something for themselves and their girlfriends and everything so they can compete and have a fair chance to um, win or lose, you know, it'd be fair amongst people, by, pe by your people, for your people, and like your people, right? Mm -hmm. and, and from stories I told again, you know, they used to have different categories, and you know, everybody from a heterosexual, uh, gender queer, whatever, transgender, all types of people came to the balls, all walks of life, you bought tickets for it, it was a show, you got dressed up, you went, and then they started to have the male categories, and again, from stories told to me, the first uh, man to win a category at a ball was Erskine Christian for uh, Butch Queen Face. Well, Models Boys Face, because you know the categories that are today were called something else back then as well. Mm -hmm. You know, the so ballroom started to elevate. And then at Paris, one time at an icon ball in Atlanta, is that they used to have different names for different people from different bor boroughs. And some people used to take their last names or the street names and make it, that was how the houses would be informed. And Racine 
can correct me a little bit because uh, of course she's she's been there she knows the beginnings of it i'm just going on stories and then that's when the houses formed and a lot of time the houses were named after your last name erskine christian paris dupree or whatever avis pendavis and and dorian corey and uh, crystal labeza and a lot of daddy so they started the houses and then the men that supported them would be in the houses and as men as the male categories grew so did ballroom you know and so then you had the models runway face model magazine face uh butch queen performance which uh paris Dupree and hector extravaganza are noted for creating that style of performance and everything and then you had all of the kids from back then you know you had kevin omni or chanel terry chanel you know erskine christian michael princess and 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 so many others you know uh lynn dupree tenille dupree so many people that we don't know robbie saint laurent made a pathway and like racine said earlier a safe space for us to come to and enjoy life as we know it among people like us and so that made us comfortable you created family bonds um situations it, it helped people out that were homeless sometimes you could stay at a friend's house during mm -hmm. that time we put people in ballroom uh, best yes, best dressed man. They had those categories as well, and you you started to formulate these relationships. But the competitions was good, you know. You you battled on the floor, and you left. And I remember back in the days, them telling me, you know how we walk balls. You used to have to sign up for the category, and mm. so you signed up um, at the Elks Lodge or the Crystal Ballroom, the upside downside staircase. They used to call it, I think it was, or Candy Rock. Um, you had to sign up for the categories and they would call you out, you know, when that category was called, you know, and, and it was very structured. And I think sometimes some things were done by 10, some were done by secret panel, you know, you say who you want and you pass it down like a beauty contest. They tried to keep it into the elements of a beauty pageant, you know, as ballroom grew, but you know, with things change as evolution does, everything changes, things started to change in ballroom. And so we added more categories, we added more houses, uh, houses left. La Beja was like one of the epicentric houses of ballroom, literally, as we know today, one of the first ballroom houses. And that birthed houses as well. It birthed the house of St. Clair, it birthed the house of Revlon. It birthed the house, of, really from them, other houses birthed, like the house of Icon, because we come from um, St. Clair and Revlon. And Revlon comes from um, La Beja and Ebony. Mm -hmm. and so it, it, was, it was a great time. And when I came out and discovered it, it was just all about your family. And you could be friends with people in different houses. But when you got on that floor, that competition, yeah, I don't know you. It'd be fire. And, used to, and people used to chant for each other. So they used to really go up for each other when they walked. They encouraged each other. And if you were rivals, like Racing said, you did so much. You could be enemies on the floor, but you will help your girlfriend get ready for a ball. However you got ready, for, however she got ready for it. The ballroom in those days, and then we didn't have balls all the time. It was very far and in between. It was kind of early and it was cheap. Well, for me, $13, $15 when I first went to a ball. Now we're at 45 40 <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. All this happened in New York. Thank you. That was great. That was that was that was really good. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Um, yeah, I didn't even realize that you guys came, yeah, that, that lineage from the LaBeja all the way down to like mm -hmm. where we are now. A lot of people don't know about that. <laughs> Correct. Um, right. They don't want to know. <laughs> he said don't want to know. <laughs> all right. Um, so I want to move a little bit down. Um I-95 to Alvernian. Um, talk to us about the origins of Felix Baldwin scene. So Philadelphia had its first ball in 1989, created by my first gay mother, the late Michael Gaskins Onyx. Mm. Um, you had older people in Philadelphia that probably went on, like the older trans women that were going to New York to Sally's and other places uh, that were involved in ballroom, but we didn't know anything about it. Uh, Michael Gaskins took me to my first ball in 80, 87 going on 88. It was the La Beja ball at Trax. Um, so, you know, I was fascinated. He decided in 88 that he wanted to throw a ball. And so the House of Onyx was formed and the Onyx Ball was August 1989 in Philadelphia. Um, so yeah, that's how that was created. Um, 
Later on that year, I joined the House of Jadu, which was another house in Philly at that time. Um, I stayed there for about a year. I left in January 1990 and created the House of Xavier. And how I created that name was I was sitting in my kitchen and I was trying to figure, and this is almost a story like from Paris, um, I was trying to figure out a name that I wanted to call my house. I didn't want to call my house my last name or Alvernian or whatever. Um, so it was this boy that I really liked, and he left Philly to go to Colorado somewhere, wherever he came from. And his name was Xavier. So <laughs> I was like, well, that's what my house is going to be, the house of Xavier. I know that's right. uh, so uh, I, cre I got that. Me and Paris used to laugh at that years later because, like James was saying earlier, um, when people lived in certain boroughs, they took their last names and made, created their houses. Paris was dating a boy named something Dupree, and that's how she formed the house of Dupree. She named it after her boyfriend, oh, wow. which his last name was Dupree. Um, uh, for people that don't know, Paris is from Philadelphia. Uh, so again, yeah, the House of Xavier was created. Um, we debuted at the Avis Penn Divers Ball at the Red Club in 1990, January. And, um, you know, I was only 18 years old, uh, learning my way through that ballroom life, you know. Um, I wound up recruiting a lot of people uh, in Philly, you know, I used to walk through the mall called the gallery and I used to have my little business cards and I used to ask boys, do they want to come model and stuff? So that's how I used to, and, and people in Philly would tell you, that's how I used to get all my kids. I would just see boys on the street and ask them if they want to model. And I would bring all these people to the balls. So um, later on that year, it was a club in Philly called um, Allegro's. And they became the sponsor of our house. And Madonna's Vogue video came out that year, 1990. And we performed at the club. We recreated the video Vogue in 1990 when it debuted. At, uh, they used to have these uh, little award ceremonies at the club uh, every year. Um, so later on that week, the owner, which was Joey Venuti, he um, invited us to his penthouse and he asked who was the leader of the house, which was me. Then he asked me how old I was. I told him I was 18. He told me I was too young to be running a house. And how did I get in his club at 18 years old? <laughs> uh, so he was like, somebody else in this group has to be in charge. So, of course, me being me, I was like, no, that's not how that's working. So, of course, I got up and said, well, I'm leaving. Whoever want to leave can leave. Whoever want to stay can stay. Uh, so I left. I went straight to the nightclub. We used to have this uh, House of Xavier logo on the nightclub's wall. I went in there and ripped the logo off the wall. Um, so I was baffled and devastated. You know, I was only a teenager. Um, so me and this boy I used to mess with, his name was Mike B. So one day we was in the club when I was on stage vogue, and he was like, um, so I see you closed your house down. Um, I want to create a new house. So I was like, okay, I'm cool. I'm with it. So uh, he created the name Prestige and I recruited the member. So that's how Prestige came about that year, the same year, 1990. Um, and I guess the rest is history. Wow. That's, that's, you just, you just went down, just, you just heard that. Oh, <laughs> you just heard that. All right. So I'm going to move on down now to Racine. If you could talk a little about the origins of ballroom here where we are in Washington, D.C. How about that? Uh, you know, I, I'm sorry. Um, before I even start, can I just say this? Yes. Um, we didn't give a moment of silence. We just lost so many in the last six months of the moment of ballroom. We just lost Derek LaBeja, Patrick Ebony, Michael Princess, Pepo Oren, Montana. And I just wanted to speak their names before we begin. In the last six months, we lost them and many others. But these are older folks from my era that I remember that it is because of them we've had so many people today 
So I just wanted to speak their names before I begin. Um, when I was first introduced to ballrooms, because I used to go to a lot of the clubs back then that the transsexuals ruled in, like the Brass Rail, the, the Black Nugget, in uh, places like that, we didn't have a lot of clubs that were primarily for people of color because DC was a segregated state. And during that time when balls were going on, I met Avis through my cousin and I met her and, and then it was like, oh, you, you know, remember when we took you to this ball? That's that, you know, that was Avis's ball. So I had met Linda, who was Avis's first daughter, Linda Pendarvis, God rest her soul. And she was Avis's first daughter. So they would go back and forth because balls at that time were held three times a year in various cities like New York, Philly, Virginia, DC, but they would only have them three times a year. So everybody would jump according to what city at that particular time was having a ball. So the kids from DC would go up to New York and walk and everybody always wanted to go to either Paris, uh, Dorian, Avis, Pepper. You had to go to one of their balls because it was fire. You know, it was fire. You had to go to one of those. And usually sometimes Pepper and Dor uh, Peppa and Dorian would have a ball together. And they would have them. Um, and of course, the best balls in New York were always in Harlem. But when we're in DC, they used to have balls at the WST, which was a black radio station, which now houses the 930 Club. Wow. They would have it at places at the Howard Theater. And they would bring in balls. And they would also bring in the Jewel Box Review, which Avis and Dorian and, uh, uh, and the girls were a part of that. So that brought in the world of drag and transsexualism and ballroom. And they would hold it at the, uh, the Lincoln Theater, uh, a few other places throughout DC, Virginia at the time, because when I think of DC, I always think about the DMV, Maryland, DC and Virginia. So the kids would come, but when, you know, because I was a Pendarvis, even though it was considered a New York house, because Avis was from here, she was my mother. So immediately we just were kindred spirits. But when I think about the, the ballroom scene in DC, there was the girls like Puffy, Tracy, Mimi, and Monica who were all Ebony's at the time. Richard came, saw them one time, Richard snatched them up and they all became Ebony. And they would go because at the time nobody had seen, like DC had its own kind of special look. You know, the girls always gave you these unique haircuts, short. They were giving you Tracy, you know, Tony Braxton and Holly Berry before they hit the scene. So they were giving you this different look. And of course, up in New York, the girls were giving you long hair and Spanish flavor and body yaddy yaddy, you know, with a little surge help, but they were still turning it. But the DC girls, the Philly girls, the New York girls, I mean, you know, it was a different kind of flavor, you know, that they had. And it was a different kind of feel. So if you talk about DC scene and ballroom, when I think about houses that formed out of here, Juan Avian from DC formed the House of Avian. Uh, the House of Allure was formed here in DC by Al. Yes. And Okio, who became Diane, who they were the original mother and father of the House of Allure. And then Monica left the House of Ebony and became the second mother of the House of Allure. And when she stepped into them shoes, it was on <laughs> and popping because Monica gave you a whole nother flavor. And mm -hmm. that's when the House of Allure just took off into the stratosphere. Mm -hmm. Then there was Lowell Kahn, mm -hmm. the founder of the House of Khan, who's from DC, who I, I remember him that. and Eric Hassan Christian having a conversation about you need to form a house. Mm -hmm. So Noel, you know, because Noel in the kids from DC was known for little labels and the polo gear was the shit. So they was wearing all that polo and that gear and them kids was turning it. So and, <laughs> and Noel had body and was and still is walking still has body. over 50. Yes. Make them know it. Noel, tell yes. him to suffer, tell him yes. to eat shake. <laughs> Shout you out know, to Noel. Still doing Lowell it. Khan, his body is sitting in over 50. And he formed in the founder of the House of Khan. And then through when 
all a lot of the other kids in the House of Khan broke off. Now you got the West, the Milans, uh, Prada, a whole lot of kids came out of the House of Khan. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people don't want to give Lowell his just due, but you must pay homage to know where you're going. You got to know where you've been. And the mm -hmm. was the original founder. So we mm -hmm. got to give, we got to know our history. And the well paved the way. I remember when the kids, when we were on three buses and came mm -hmm. to the Mark Ballroom for the first Mulet ball when Terry Mugler came. And Terry Mugler was there, honey. Mm -hmm. And the kids were slaying it. Baby, they only got these six categories because some hot mess popped off, you know, and all balls. But the kids got to pulling out guns and got to shooting. And then we had to run up in the refrigerator to the mock ball room and hide in the refrigerator because the kids started shooting. And oh baby, God. it was not a pretty sight because no shade, no read. And I, you know, you know, let's just, you know, ballroom is a competition. Mm -hmm. But sometimes people can't take it when certain kids from certain cities are slaying it so hard. And it was mm -hmm. the, the beef unbeknownst to us between some other houses in the House of Khan. You know, we didn't know it. We got on the bus, came to New York, and the kids started beefing. And, but it was still a marvelous, fabulous. The House of Mugler's ball was over. And that was the original mother, Stacy, was a butch queen who was giving you face to the gods, you say. Stacy Mugler was. Serving face, Miss Day. She was so pretty. I thought she was a woman the first time they introduced me to. Her. You couldn't tell me that wasn't a butch queen. But they slayed that ball was on fire. So I, I just really want to, you know, give, give props to Lowell and our wonderful when you talk about Eric Christian, who, mm. you know, he had the he put it in Lowell's head, start your house, because I'm starting my thing and I'm doing mine, but I see the light in you. So, you know, and then, and there are a lot of other houses here in D.C. And, you know, so that, you know, D.C. has always been on the map. We are the nation's mm -hmm. capital. So, you know, <laughs> and not knocking every city, but I'll say this, every city had its own flavor. Mm -hmm. Philly had its own flavor, the house of Jujon, you know, the house of Taffy, uh, uh, Taffy uh, Jadu, all of the, every, I would say that every city had a different look. The girls mm -hmm. down south gave you a southern feel. Most of them were pageant girls. So the girls down south was giving you gowns and hair and all the stuff that you see in Continental. When they came up north to compete, they their whole image was different. The girls in D.C. gave you sleek haircuts, was giving you uh, pre-moan, only moans, no surge, giving you body adi adi. They wasn't all surged up, but New York had the better doctors, so the girls had the better work. So the girls had, you know, they were surged to the gods. So every girls and every city had its own flavor. So, you know, that's what I'm saying. To the girls in New York, they was turning it. To the girls in Philly, they were slaying it. To the girls in New York, they was eating it. And to the girls in D.C., they was coming through and slaying it. And to the girls down south were making it known. So yeah. every city had its own flavor when it came to ballroom. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for that. Thank you, you for that. So many things. Yeah, did she break that down? Yes, yeah, she did. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. <laughs> yeah. You broke that all the way down. Thank you all so much way. for that. Um, yeah, so thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for um honoring those um that have passed. Um and um, yeah, we really just gave a whole good history piece. Yeah, I'm turning this already, already, already turning it. Um, and shout out to Stanley Milan, my one of my best friends. Um, Eric Christian Bizarre, that was a commentator raining when that first came out. Um, you know, love that man. Um, so, 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 um, thank you all. Along with who paved the way, and if you have to Ooh. say who, I'm gonna get comment. Go we talk about commentators. We must always remember Junior LaBeja. Junior LaBeja, yes. People don't pay Junior his homage. And Junior was slaying it. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes, and Junior is still still slaying it. You know, I call him like a, he's like a word mask. Like when he talks and tells a story, it just draws you in. Um, thank you for that. Um, all right, you got the, you got the chat box going I'm crazy, Racy. Yeah. Yes, Racy, <laughs> you got this chat box going crazy. Yes, um, 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. So um, we're going to go on to the next question, um, which Everybody I believe watching. is for... Ooh, no, I was just go ahead. Everybody watching, please share the live, share the live, share it to your house group, share it to the different ballroom group, share it to your page. Uh, just get it out there so we can get as many people in here and learning the knowledge and all of that just as we are. Yes, because this is this is some some history coming out right now. I didn't even I can even I didn't even imagine so far. We only got two what two three questions. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the next question is for um, Jamel. Yes. Uh, so the next question is: Share with us a time that you think was a historic ballroom moment. So. Oh, well, we got we got mother uh, grandmother Racine already up on big screen. Right, so I'm just gonna okay, stop. Okay, so, okay. There are many. There are many. Yeah. But I'll tell you one historic moment. Everybody wanted to always go to Paris's ball, and it was something about if you won at Paris's ball, you have now proved yourself worthy. It was something about a Paris's burning ball that everybody had to go to. It was like you had to go there. So it's like, it, and if you went to Avis's, Paris's, Peppers, Dorian, Angie, if you went there and won at theirs, it was given. You have arrived. You know what I'm saying? And to the to the to the founders, you know. And and I also have to talk about people like Benoit and Robbie and Ephraim and Michael and R R and Devin and, and the Butch Queen who came yes. through. Because at one point. Halls were only for, you know, primarily transsexuals. But the Butch Queens in the 70s, late 70s, had taken over. And it was like Butch Queen Supreme. You know, so I just wanted to give them a shout out. But historical moments, oh, my God. I'll give you three. One, the night when the children mopped this fierce piece from this designer that was worth $25,000 or 30000 and the FBI showed up <laughs> after they finished walking grand, and got the trophy. The FBI escorted them kindly out the door. <laughs> so, you know, I'll think about that moment. I think about, um, I'll think about in the Savoy Ballroom, the Savoy Ballroom, the legendary historical Savoy Ballroom, when known for having all its legendary jazz folks, when, uh, uh, Omni, Kevin Omni had a ball on the third floor. Shout out Kevin Let's Omni. Go the, they had a hustler's ball on the first floor. The Latin children had the second floor and the Queens was on the third floor. So mind you, we had to go all the way up to the top of the building to get to the ball. All oh, every fierce Latin diva was slaying it and turning it and set, serving hair and body. They was laying all out on the judge's table, emoting, shaking, and carrying on the girls that got to work and their faces were sitting for the God. And you know, back then, because of colorism, it was, you know, unfortunately, you know, we I do miss the days when we had light and lovely, tan and teasing, and dark and lovely. I like the three categories in one. It gave everybody a chance to win. But a lot of times, because of colorism, they was always going with the light-skinned girls and the Latin girls because they grew hair and they gave, made it a little hard for the dark-skinned girls before Tracy Africa hit the scene. And in Portia of Asia, when we talk about brown and dark-skinned girls and Tennille Dupree, you know, them girls was giving a uh, step back. <laughs> so then at that particular ball, all the girls was there. They was carrying it on it. They, it was so many of them. I was like, God, I had to stand on my feet. Out of nowhere, Puffy Ebony came. She had a bucket of water in a scrub bush. She turned her hair up and tied it in a rag like she was working on a slave plantation. She had on Daisy Duke shorts. She got in the middle of the floor, took the bucket in the scrub bucket and scrubbed the floor like she was a washerwoman. The crowd went crazy. Puffy was given, and that is realness. They say, give it to me. They say, give it to me. They say, girl, he slayed them chill so hard. I was given, get up off of her. That girl got on that floor and scrubbed that floor like her, her Rick was due. And the, the judges panel just had to give it to her because she slayed them children. And it was just one of those moments I will never forget. I can't think of a third. Well, I can think of a third one, but I'll just save that for later. 
Um, Uncle James. Um, Kareem in the comments took one of mine. <laughs> um, but I remember the night, uh, it was 1993 at Eric Christian Bazaar's uh, first ball. And it was Femme Queen Faith. Now, Danielle was always known for wearing long hair, you know, and she used to tell me a story. She started wearing long hair because the Latin girls that walked face always had long hair. Mm. So she would always wear long hair to make her stand out so she could win face. Honey, we was at the back of the room. We was we was waiting for Femme Queen Faith. The girls was walking. Moldavia, uh, uh, Tracy Africa, uh, Stephanie, Keisha, um, India, the girls were there, and you just knew Danielle was coming. And when you seen Neil hit the back of the runway, but you seen Danielle, you seen her in the mall courtroom. It was these three doors that you could see from across the runway, right? Mm -hmm. And it led to the bathroom. You could see it was her walking towards the bathroom, but Danielle was like completely concealed. When you seen Neil hit the back of the runway and she had on that all black and she was wrapped up like that. And he took it off, and she had a shortcut. Ballroom lost it. <laughs> the whole ballroom lost it. It was, <laughs> what? And then she smiled and walked down that runway to Diana Ross. Um, love hangover. <laughs> Danielle packed them bitches up that night. You hear me? <laughs> packed them up one by one. Mother was on. And I was Revlon then, so you know, it was... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it was, yo, Danielle packed them up that night with the shortcut because she was known for long, wearing that long hair. It, it's on YouTube. And you can, every time I watch it, I still get excited. You just see the crowd just go bonkers. Whoa. And another night, um, Sanaya did Cuban Pete on a ladder up town at the karate club. When she did Cuban Pete off that ladder and she jumped off that ladder in that white that white cat suit, <laughs> it was all she wrote. You know what I'm saying? There was so many, like Racine said, there's so many historical moments. Like Kareem said in the um in the comments, Letitia at the fish tank at the Ebony Family Reunion Ball in 1992 at the Lincoln Square. Whoa, now that mm, if you just take this black. <laughs> She over something with a flashlight coming down the runway. Somebody is pushing it or whatever. And they took that shit off and she was dressed like a mermaid. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Fucked it up. <laughs> the problem was imaginative and they allowed you to be creative. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of categories today. So a lot of things were rushed. But when you get that moment, <clears throat> you gotta go for it, and those girls went for it. I, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, we love this. We love this. We love this, Uncle Al. Wow. Yeah, it's <laughs> a lot of historic moments. Um, again, Kareem stole mine. So for me, the Letitia and the fish tank would be my number one. Um, mm -hmm. Other historic moments for me is like when they created the first latex bowl. Uh, it was an opportunity uh, for our worlds to collide with the celebrities. That was the first time in Baldwin we had real celebrities coming out. You know, had Janet Jackson and J-Lo up at the top tier and, mm -hmm. you know, just that atmosphere and that aura. And so many great moments was made at those beginning of those latex balls in uh, 95, 96. Um, Probably to me, my most proudest, most historic moment for those who don't know, and some do know, <laughs> is that I created the first Butch Queen Vogue Femme category in 1992. Uh, at Roses Night, Roses All Night Disco in March 92, uh, the category was called Butch Queen Vogue and Like a Femme Queen, before mm -hmm. Jack changed the name to Butch Queen Vogue Femme. And grand prize that night was Tiny La Beja St. Clair. Uh, so to me, that was like one of my pr proudest historic moments of creating that category. Mm, awesome. Thank you for that. Look at that. We love the history. We love the history. Y'all are like, I'm getting goosebumps listening to y'all. I just want to let them talk and just keep on talking. I just learned so much. I just want to let them keep on talking. Um, 
Okay, Queen, you want to pop the next question? Next question, yes. All right, so the next question says, how do you feel about ballroom going from underground to mainstream? And the second part of that question is, how has it affected ballroom? Um, since we started with Grant Racine, I would like to start with Uncle James. I feel about it. <laughs> there was a point in time I wish that ballroom stayed underground. Because I think with the um, the spotlight not shown sh shining upon us, I think that we had more fun because it was more of a mystery. It was more of it was it was a mystique to ballroom, you know. At least for me, people didn't know where I was going on certain days, and when I come back with a trophy or something like that, they didn't know where I got it from. They didn't know where I was getting this pig Latin language from, even though girls around the way spoke it, but a boy to speak it, they didn't know things. So it was a mystery for me. Then I had to realize like, you know what? They used to say, you can't put ballroom on a resume. That is no longer true. You understand ballroom teaches you a lot of things. It teaches you about confidence. It teaches you about leadership. It teaches you about teamwork. It teaches you so many skills that you use in everyday life or nine to five, right? So, and also it, the, it becoming mainstream have, has given many people in ballroom the opportunity, one, not to hide who they are, and two, the opportunity to be what we are in ballroom, and that's famous, right? And 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 also teach them something else about life. So it, it, now I feel it's a good thing. We have things like pose. We have uh, you know transgender women representing everywhere in every kind of movie and television show, as well as the men and the trans men, and everybody could be themselves. So it it's good now. Before I was kind of like oh, I should say underground, but main going mainstream has a, has opened a lot of door. We got legendary, you know, it's opened a lot of doorways for a lot of people to become successful in life and use ballroom as that as that as that as that, as that engine to keep them going for that. How has it affected ballroom? I think we 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 might be, in my opinion, again, we might be losing the essence of ballroom, meaning what ballroom really, the foundation of where ballroom is at. You know, there was a time when I came out, old way and new way, and Femme Queen performance was the three categories, right? So either you went to Vogue, you went to, if you was a guy, butch queen, you went to uh, Vogue the new way or the old way. And if you was a girl, you could walk Femme Queen performance or even Femme Queen Vogue butch. Now, worldwide, most people's performance style is that of the folk femme aspect. So that kind of, to me, limits the performances of other people's capabilities when it comes to Vogue, right? Because now it's affected because it everybody has to come to the balls and if the balls are so large and it's so many people, so now we gotta, we gotta condense categories together. Mm -hmm. So like Racine said, she used to like the, the light, the dark, and the brown. I like when categories are broken up, especially for performances. The women, the butch queens, the butch queen and drags, the butch queen vogue femmes, the femme queens. You know, everybody get a separate trophy for their particular category. Now, with a large pr grand prize, I understand making a winner from each category battle. But it's affected it a lot, the foundation, the structure, how we do things. And now people want to be on television, which is a good thing. Um, but I think some people um, desire to be associated with ballroom nowadays is something not genuine. It, it's, it's for a profit and it's affected us in that way, the profit. And a lot of us might lose out on that because somebody else will gain a profit from our stories. Hmm. Okay, um, Uncle Al. How do I feel about ballroom going from underground to mainstream? Um, I used to think about it when I was younger. Um, always dreamed about, uh, you know, when Madonna came out with Vogue, like, you know, I was excited. Like, like that's the next level we need to be on. We need to be out telling our stories and, you know, letting them know where Vogue comes. Because, of course, mainstream thought Madonna created Vogue. Mm -hmm. And which, you know, they had to find out later that she didn't. Um, uh, I think everything should evolve 
and it's a good thing. Uh, as every 10 years come along, things change. We get a bunch of new generation of, of, of ball walkers. Um, I just think that when new people come out that, that we have a we have a big gap between old school and new school and they have to simultaneously always merge and come together because again like racing said you, you have to remember where you came from to get where you at right now people that paved the way for you to be able to be mainstream because mainstream did just not pop up like that people had to pave the way for you to get to that place um and a lot of people died in that struggle um it's become a uh, ballroom is a billion dollar business uh, so, um, you can put ballroom on a resume. You can pay your bills from balls. I remember when back in the day, nineties, the kids was like, Oh, this bitch is having like 50 balls, honey. You know, what are you trying to do? You trying to pay bills. You trying to get rich. Um, and after a while it will become business. Uh, some people lost the love of ballroom. Uh, some people are only in it for the business. Some people are in it for both. Uh, so it could go either way. It depends on your real reason for being in ballroom. I was having this conversation with somebody before, uh, like when new people are coming into the scene now, they're not coming into ballroom for the reasons that we came in in the late 80s, early 90s. You know, that family value, uh, the sense of that that comfort space. People are coming in like, how much is my category of uh, where can I audition to be on ballroom throwbacks? Is my clip going to be posted tomorrow? Uh, can I get on TV? That, that's the that's the difference now. Okay. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and Grant. I, I think it's like we say, it's a plus and a minus. You know, I'm really happy to see it go where it is. And part of me, uh, we we've lost the mystique and the uniqueness, and the uh, because we don't tell the history of ballroom. Let's be clear. We don't honor the history of ballroom. But the fact that we have all these films and television and folks working and, and people, and, and if we think about when we talk about music, people always jump on Madonna. But before the Madonna, it was Liz Torres, Jody Watley, Queen Latifah, Diana Ross, then Madonna. When we talk about the video formulation of bringing the kids on, that was the history in music. And then all these other things and doorways open. And people don't know even that. They only think Madonna was it. But in, in people, I, I'm happy to see that One Pose is the first ever television series to hire over 250 part of the LGBTQIA staff from writing on down. That's, that's never been done. To see people like Billy win an Emmy for Pose. The doors have been opened in so many ways for us to say, we can no longer say that we can't do this or we can't do that. We have to celebrate and work within the channel and celebrate ballroom. I think about how ballroom as is getting on the mic helps hone my skill to go into radio and to do television and to even push me in to have the Ask Racine show and to open that door and that plethora to be able to sit down with celebrities all across the country who when they say, oh, are you part of the House of Pendobbs? Yes, <laughs> yes. And then they want to talk to me about ballroom. So I'm very honored that through all of that, where we are, we have to celebrate the history, the richness. I wish that ballroom today would celebrate, because let's be clear, anybody can, let's be clear, you can acquire a garment in, any, in various means. <laughs> but to get on it and to create, and to create and sew, the designer delight category, leather versus suede. Them kids was turning it. Mm -hmm. Richard, uh, Richard Ebony and all them kids would come through and they had a space for the big boys that, you know, and I'm glad. But what I want us to understand what made ballroom unique was everybody had a platform. 
everybody had a category, everybody had a lane. And it's unfair to put everybody in one lane and have them all compete against each other. The fact that when you went to a ball and you could compete in one category and it could be three winners, it gave a space for why it did what it did was it created something for everybody. Everybody could go and there were three categories. I mean, there were three choices in a category where everybody could either win first, grand first or second. So it made you say, well, you know what? Even if the kids are gonna be a little shady, I may not win because so-and-so's girlfriend is on the panel, but at least I can get first or second. So I do like that kind of, we under we have to celebrate that history and kind of get back to that. But then here's another plus side. The kids ain't never have the kind of money that they doing and they giving away now at the balls. My God, child, 10,000, that was grand prize. Well, 5,000 was grand prize. But the fact that these kids are doing 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, I ain't never seen that kind of money at a ball. But I understand it's a business now. And it's mm -hmm. created that doorway and that element. But I'd also like for all of these wonderful folks who are part of the new generation to really honor Peppa, Crystal, Paris, Dorian, Avis, Paris, in a space that every time somebody would have a ball that somebody should come and bring it like those girls brought it because there was a uniqueness about each one of them that brought the ballroom to a standstill. And it's important that we celebrate them because I go to balls now and everybody wants to look like models or everybody wants to like look video vixen. And I get it, there's a space for Carly B and Mega Stallion because I can pop lock it with them too. <laughs> but we also got to honor those who made it possible and mm -hmm. celebrate them. Because sometimes these kids don't, when I go to balls and then some of these kids tell me they've never heard of Crystal or Paris mm -hmm. or all them, that breaks my heart because you should know who they are if you walk in a ball or coming into the place. You should know who these are because these folks made it possible for us to have these places. And I think that that's what I'd like to see with the new generation, how it's affected the ballroom, the loss of our history. So to mm -hmm. let me say this before I leave you guys, because I've got to go and I got I'm a caretaker of my mother mm -hmm. and I have to go and take care of her. But before I leave everybody, let me say this. First of all, thank you, DC Ballroom Council for thinking enough of me and asking me to come to the table. Because sometimes you feel like when you're a certain age, we are not always invited anymore. But because I'm visible, I let you know like Queen Elizabeth, I'm not getting off the throne yet. <laughs> but I say this to all of you, Kenya, God bless you as you heal and become better. Folks in ballroom have been praying for you and lifting you up. Thank you. To all the DC ballroom council, thank you for having this vision. I want to say to James and Twiggy and to Al Vernian, thank you for keeping our history alive. I love you. I love you. To Tommy for keeping our history alive. To a straight man named Gerard, Mm -hmm. who, who took pictures and was a historian, Gerard Gaskin, mm -hmm. to our wonderful photographers, Eve Harlow, a historian, to my other girlfriend who I'm forgetting her name, who's my Facebook friend who might shoot me if she ever sees this, um, who took pictures of all the balls and she was short, Chantan. I might not but I pronounce it right, but it begin with an S. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Who came, and these were straight allies who took pictures and captured all of our history. And to anybody, I have a lot of ballroom tapes on video that I have on DVD. And to ballroom throwbacks, get in touch with me. I'm going to send you this stuff so you can have it. And you can take it and put it out there on video. Because so many people call me and ask me about stuff. Yes, I have photos too. So, and to Earl folks from DC Black Pride and Kenya and the entire staff of DC Black Pride is, and to the African-American Museum of Natural History, 
who we are all going to work together to get a ballroom. Yes. <laughs> a ballroom space in there that they will celebrate our full richness in the African American mm -hmm. Museum and the history of ballroom. Don't think it's stopping now. COVID just put a pause on it, but right. we got it on the back burner and it's going to come. And if we, are, if we don't speak it and name it and claim it, we won't see it. But trust me, it will be a space in that African American Museum for ballroom. Yes. I, I'm speaking it on to you now, and I thank you all for just allowing me to be in your presence. And Kenya, we pulled teeth to get here. Well, we got and here. It was a time getting here, <laughs> and Camille and Dante, y'all worked with my team, and we was going back and forth. But sometimes y'all can't always get me because of what I'm going through. And a lot of times you don't tell right. people when you're going through some stuff, and we're all going through some stuff. And a lot of times it's a caretaker. I'm overwhelmed. Right, right, right. But I God gives me the strength to keep on keeping on. And as you can see, as soon as I get off from this, I gotta go be Mother Teresa. <laughs> so the work, so you understand what I'm going through. Yeah. So thank y'all for working with me to get me here to Nikki, Czar, Krilios, Brittany, Team Racing for getting me here. And everybody, if you get a chance, this is the last 10 years is the finale of the Ass Racing Show, which I premiere March 3rd. It's the ending, but trust and believe I got something on the back burner. Ha-ha! <laughs> but don't think, don't think I'm going away. I'm just working on something new. And if T.H. Right. Madison, who's a part of Ballroom, who is premiering her show on WeTV, mm -hmm. we got spaces. We have places at the table. And I'm claiming mine in 2022 and 2021. So I invite everybody to join me March 3rd on all on social media for the Ask Racine show for the for the wonderful premiere of our 10th and final season, which is free. And of course, I'm the queen of the shameless plug and mother plugs every goddamn day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank you, Racine, for I joining love, us. Uh, Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You have an love open you. invitation love to join you. us. Any, you have an open invitation to join us anytime you'd like again. I will. So. I'm coming for your pride edition. <laughs> okay, there we go. Yep, yep. You know I'm working on it. You know I'm I working on it. <laughs> thank you so much. Love y'all. Everybody. Love you. Love, love, you. You, love you. Go in light. Go in love. And let us be better as we enter spaces. Let us love on each other. Amen. Check on one another. Amen. Call somebody you ain't talked to. Even a bitch that won over you in a ball that you won't really fuck with too much. You won't really use her no more. You open, you be reading at the ball. Call that bitch and say, girl, how you doing? I was thinking about you, bitch. I ain't seen you in a while. Check on each other. Yes. I love y'all. Love you love more. Too. Thank you so much. Love you more. Thank you. She's All the right. key. Yes. 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 And then there were two. And then there <laughs> were it. two. All right. All right, but it's not over. We still have more questions, so everyone keep on sharing the live. We're still going. We've got more things. The next round of question um, goes to Dante. So thank you all again for being here. Um, thank everybody that's viewing. Uh, that's what when I'm looking down. I'm looking my laptop to see how many people we got up in here. Um, so thank you all again for being here as panelists. Thank everybody that's watching. Um, the first question we're going to open up with is one of, you know, this is, I feel like this is one of Ballroom's favorite topics. It's, it's yes. nothing that gets the people talking in Ballroom like this one here. Um, look at James. Look at James. Look at James. <laughs> and, you know, we often hear, we often hear back in my days, you know, it took X amount of time. So I want to ask you two, um, how many years were you walking balls before you um, got your Ballroom stack? <laughs> okay, go for it. Uh, well, uh, for me, it was three years, but a lot of people need to know that uh, it's a difference that people don't uh, explain to this day. So back in the day, uh, you can be legendary for a category, but being legendary overall was something totally different. Mm -hmm. So now when people become legendary, let's say somebody become legendary realness next week. The commentator will introduce them out, the legendary such and such. They will not say this is uh, legendary Vogue film or legendary face such and such. They will just call them the legend. 
So back in the day when we came out, being legendary for a category and being an overall legend was two different things. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So um, shout out to Steve Khan from DC in the building. He just commented. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. that's what I remember. The legend and legendary. Yeah. Two different it was, yep. So now they don't even do that. They just go straight, you're a legend. Right. <laughs> well, for, me, yeah. for me, it took me two and a half years to become legendary. That's because I was turning it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yo, right. <laughs> he's really falling out. <laughs> no, because well, I was. Um, you was. No, I was. I was. I was. Um, and um, and that's when I was slim, trim. Mm. <laughs> um, no, but um, yeah, two and a half years, and then like Avernian said, there was legendary and legend. You know, a, a lot of times in ballroom, it's about comprehension. And if you don't know the meaning of a word or how to use an adjective or an adverb or a pronoun or a noun, you know, you will tend to make these mistakes as we have, as people have made during the time in ballroom, i.e. why people feel that they are not legendary realness and then just a legend. You understand? So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> I had to scratch my head on that one. The icon mm -hmm. has spoken. Has the spoken. icon has spoken. Yes. All right. Dante? You got to switch it. <laughs> y'all oh. ain't, ain't print out y'all sheets. Okay, no. What, what is one of your most outstanding or favorite moments in ballroom? I know y'all have already, we named other people's when we talk about historic moments, but we're now talking about you all's. <laughs> Um, yeah, James. Okay, James, go ahead. Well, go ahead, Alberni. My most outstanding favorite moment probably was me no. creating no. Uh, the first annual Dorian Corey Awards Ball in 1995. Oh, I'm sorry. Say that, say that one more time, Jay. I'm Alberni. Uh, so for me, my first uh, outstanding moment will be me creating the first. Dorian Corey Awards Ball in 1995. I felt accomplished and successful. Um, I was just proud of that moment and the people that I brought out from all over the world to come to Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. So that was probably my best moment for me. All right. All right. For James, and you have a question on the screen, James. Yeah. So 95 in. So I, I started walking as a Revlon in 92. And uh, 91, I joined Revlon at the, yeah, 92. And um, I became legendary uh, in, in 95. So three years, I said two and a half years. Yeah, two and a half years, because it was around that time, right. So 95. Um, my most uh, outstanding and favorite moment in ballroom, I think, which is everybody's, is at the 1996 Latex Ball. Um, man, I sat down, I don't know how many people that night. Whoa, it was oh I sent them. Boom, 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 boom. We was I was oh ooh, it was a long line too. And I didn't come to walk. I'm sitting next to Danielle. I came to meet my best friend um from high school, Everett, at the ball. I'm sitting next to Danielle, and you know, she has this way of talking, and she said something to me like, You not walking? I'm like, No. And she was like, You better get up there and walk. And I'm like, Look, look what I got on. Yo, I came in there with a purple shirt, a purple polo shirt, a pair of blue jeans. I had these white Reeboks on that had like the green bubblegum bottom. Oh. And I had a beige hat. Not matching at all. No haircut, no nothing, nothing. I came in here looking rough, rugged and raw. Yo, I got up here. That crowd lost it. I said, okay. I, man, me and Dre Ebony was the last battle. When I tell you, we was kicking and pushing the table and everything. We was going at it. Boom, 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 boom. Victorious, James Ruffin. That was my favorite moment. Awesome. Mm. And yes, Annie, yes, you can ask questions. Um, we'll pop them up as we can. And hopefully, you know, our esteemed guests will be able to answer some of these questions. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know I'm a good uh, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it's fine. Um, so your next question, actually, I think it's you fine. guys answered it. 
already. It was, do you think Boehm has changed over the years? Why or why not? Kind of already did that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and skip it and um, go to the next question, um, which is, what are some things that are allowed in ballroom today that weren't allowed in ballroom during your time? Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, James, you want to go first? <laughs> you was not allowed to approach a judge. Mm. You were never allowed to approach a judge. And you didn't, well, not even going to You just, you didn't approach a judge. Hmm. Thank you. Anything else? Yeah, when I was in the House of Revlon, if you approached the judge, Miss Stewart would slap you. <laughs> <laughs> Tony and Stewart ain't played that shit. Neither did Danielle. Danielle would read you later on. That's what she would do. She would let you have it later on. But Tony and Stewart would embarrass you. <laughs> All right, Alvarez. What are some of the things that are allowed in ballroom today that weren't allowed then? Let's see. There's a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Don't bite your tongue, tell the truth. Oh, I'm not. Well, I'm not. I'm ready. I'm just trying to think of something juicy. Because they're going <laughs> to read us anyway. <laughs> <laughs> While Everani is thinking, um, since Racine and Twiggy had to jump off, we actually have time for questions. So if you guys have questions you guys want to throw out, Please put them in the chat box in your in your comment sections what? and um uh, put the questions to the on panel. Go ahead, Bernie. Uh I'm trying to really, really think that we really didn't do that people are just getting away with right now. Shit, everything. It, it's <laughs> a lot. Uh um, <laughs> getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> were people paying the judges back then? Oh, they were paying the judges. Yeah. Um, that was the floor. Well, it's it's a lot. Uh, one thing that there's nothing wrong with this. This is not a a bad thing. Uh, commentators didn't get paid back in the day. That was a volunteer job. Hmm. Uh, so uh, yeah, commentators didn't get paid in the '80s or the '90s. They didn't start paying commentators to probably. 96 96 was the beginning of commentators getting paid. I don't know, it's just so much that go on in ballroom right now that wasn't going on. You can just say everything, like James said. <laughs> well, we have um, Annie actually reversed the question What are some things that are not allowed now that were allowed during your days? Mm, that's good. What are some things that are not allowed now? That were like, oh, you were able to do your whole production. They are not allowed now. You should just get prepared. They cut the music, cut the music, cut the music, cut the music, cut the music. Oh, that's another thing that happens today that wasn't back in the day. Every five minutes, they wasn't cutting the music. What things are not allowed? They were able to commentate and still, still do what they needed to do on the runway and control the crowd and the judges and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? I think a lot of times the commentators, and it's two or three of y'all, one in the front, one in the back, one by the piano, y'all all can make this shit work. Kareem said, do you see that comment? Um, can you? Yep. Best dress spectator was not what you wore. To yes, Kareem. Oh, okay. Yes. 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 Well, yes. they changed that now, so they don't even have spectator no more. It's just one straight to best dress. Best dress. Best dress. Because they knew yeah. the girls were doing that. Yeah. 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 A lot of things. Listen, you couldn't walk labels if you didn't have our label. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh -uh. didn't the oh, kids did, did kid do some check stitching back in the day? All the time. I got All one. So back when uh, I first started walking balls, uh, Butch Queen's face were not allowed to wear makeup. You had to come in there. The judges would wipe you. If they would wipe your face, it was an automatic chop mm -hmm. you had makeup on. Mm -hmm. Mm. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. Tony said, "Yes, productions were fast." Yes, Tony. Um, yeah. um, James, who have have you named any people? <laughs> <laughs> people are at James tonight. Okay. <laughs> he knew it was coming. No, I didn't know this question. 
Yes, I have deemed people. Let me tell you. The first person I deemed. I remember. Was such a hysteria. Oh, it was. Oh, God. We were going to walk from the Wednesday. Then we, were, we got to Facebook. It was, and that was Diva Div, uh, Divana uh, mm. going on at the time. Mm. Oh, it was. Mm. Oh, oh. And Charles calling. Yes, I'm going to win that and I, <laughs> Charles be at her. I love my brother. But you know, they, yeah, and they comments about that. I watch. Okay. And it was I deemed her, and it, she was turning that ball, that mini ball upside down, you know. And they were so over her because she was winning. But she had won a multiple. See, in ballroom, it was. I come from. I came in at a time where Sanaya said it best. You walk into legendary. Mm -hmm. Right, so you didn't ask for it; it was earned. And when, when like I said in '95, when I walked the ball, as I'm walking out, the person is saying the up and coming legendary James Revlon. Mm -hmm. When I won, the person again says, "Now legendary realness, James mm -hmm. Revlon." So I come, I, I came in in that time, and I kind of stick to that a little bit. She turned; she had been turning balls before that. Upside down, mm -hmm. and I understood what people were saying. Let her grow into it, and when she gets older, she doesn't have anything to look for, and all that. Da, 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 da. Missed me with that, mm -hmm. you know. At the time, I felt I had the right, and I mean, two people at the past icon ball. I couldn't do it properly because I was all over the place. Let me. Uh, the icon mm -hmm. ball, I loved it, but I was all over the place, you know. But I deemed two people at the icon ball as well. So yeah, I deemed about four or five people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, we got some interesting questions here. I'm going to pop them up on the screen. Actually, I'm going to make everyone on the screen at the same time. All right. Um, do, 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 do. Next question is, do effects really matter with clothing categories? Mm, if it's asking for money, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, agree to that. Okay. Uh, then if that could be a good thing or a bad thing. Yeah. You know, right. you the right effect on they're going to pay you and your performance does. They're so focused on the image that you're portraying that is not appealing to the judges, you know? And then um, some people come with effects and it just turns it upside down, you know? So it's kind of hit or miss. All right. So the next question is, what do you look for in Butch Queen performance? Uncle Al. I like to see all five elements. And for the girls that don't know what that is. Hands, floor, spins and dips, mm. catwalk, duck walk. The girl, mm -hmm. you know what? Vogue Femme is very entertaining. And a lot of people got some exciting performances, but a lot of people miss a lot of elements. Like some people, mm -hmm. hands are horrible, but they can spin and dip out of the world. Mm -hmm. But some people, hands is just so nasty. You forget about everything else they're doing because their hands just mesmerize you, but they ain't got no floor performance or they can't walk a duck walk is horrible. So, you know. Yeah. yeah. You don't got no hands. You don't got no type of performance. <laughs> right. You ain't got hands. Hello. <laughs> when people, I want to see it all. When they say the five elements, you know, there were so many uh, ways that we thought about it back in the days. We we separated spins and dips. Those were two different elements. They wasn't one. Catwalk and duckwalk was considered to be one element, you know, um, both. You know, so um, it has changed. I would just want to see you vogue. You know, I want to see how the fans move. I want to see how you come and spin me. I want to see how you spin. You definitely have to spin. I'm, I'm sorry. You don't spin. Uh, you know, but I want to see how you spin into that dip or that layout. Oh, they don't. Y'all know what a layout is? They didn't call that no more. I know what a layout is. <laughs> you know, a layout. You know, I want to see all that. So all of that combined into one is a performance. And people used to say there's a difference between vulgar. And a performer, you know. So uh, I get. I would assume a vogue is more technique, right? Mm -hmm. And then a performer is just free flowing, you know. And whatever style of performance that is. So I look for the magic. Is what I look for. You on that beat, mm -hmm. turning it out. The magic. You know, that's it right there. The magic. That's the key word. Yeah. All right. Um. Let's see. Pierre. I'm from Los Angeles, and when. 
And when ballroom started in LA, there was a really cool category face with performance. Yeah. I still yeah. have it at my balls. Uh, I haven't had it recently because nobody walks it no more. Mm -hmm. It's true. You know, it's only true. person that really, that's still out that probably walked it was, you know, Jamal Milan, Jamal. a few <laughs> other people, but nobody, they were like Facebook performance and I want to go straight to Vogue Femme. <laughs> yeah. You know. <laughs> I okay. live with, with Queen Face with performance. Again, a lot of these things that we have to hang up with and a lot of things that we talk about, it starts at the top. If your house parents and leaders are not teaching you these things, they should not be the ones complaining about it. Because you, uh, Vern, I think Avernia said it, there's a generational thing. There's always a problem with generations. Mm -hmm. And like you said, we should merge. But when whatever generation comes into quote unquote power, it is your duty to teach that generation behind you the foundation of what it is in every category that exists in Borough. You never know if somebody's going to take a life into an old category. They might actually turn it out. You know what I mean? So, you know, that comes from their parents. That's why we don't have anything. I mean, that's why a lot of things have fallen or by the way to mind. Yeah. All right. So the next comment we have is realist boys didn't walk out of the categories if it was masculine like streetwear. Um... That's one. Um, and Annie, well, okay, so I didn't know Annie was in Russia, so welcome. Um, and um, she says they still have face performance in Russia, and she loves the category. Hey, Russia. Hey, um, Russia. <laughs> how do you feel about Renaissance with a twist, Vogan in heels? <laughs> well, again, things have evolved. <laughs> Uh, again, back in the 90s, realness was a twist was you was really not supposed to know how to vogue. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a realness boy going out there cutting up in the gag to see them cut up and fall out was the highlight of the evening. But now people, again, skip the realness, go straight to voguing. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think Monty, Monty asked something like that in the comments too about the running for the twist, um, the bowman. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm getting up there. I'm getting up there. There's a, there's a lot. There's a lot going oh, no, on. I see. I just know that like he just touched on it, so I had seen it down there. Yeah. All right. Next question is, who's your favorite ballroom icon? Me. Junior Lab is just for me. My favorite ballroom icon. Do they have to still be alive? Or... I don't think so. Uh, Paris. Paris. Okay. Um, let's see. Someone said effects make the category hot. How do you feel about people taking their status? Well, again, in ballroom, you know, people do what they want. Again, they have really no grounded rules and regulations to stuff. Is this a, a thing that you just generally walk into that's natural? Um, anybody can take their status. The difference is if the people are going to respect it. Hmm. Okay. Touche. Yeah. All right. I see. Um, oh, go ahead, James. You was going to say something? Sorry. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, you know, I think I agree with our in. You know, if you're going to take it, at least take it at a moment that you know you're going to win. <laughs> because if you don't win, you don't have no status. Because you don't want to go there and say, I'm taking this status and the judge chop you. I don't see it. <laughs> or you lose. What status you got, people? Or you lose, right. All right. Or you lose to us like a, a star or someone new. Right. All right. <laughs> Should really sort of twist participants be penalized for mastering femme vogue, or should they walk which queen vogue fam? I think the people that walk realness with a twist should still be able to walk regular realness too. They mm. should participate in both of them. Because again, if you if you're the twister, if you walk realness with a twist and you're not walking realness, what is the point of walking? You're just voguing. So you might as well become a vogue femme. So, in your opinion, it's okay for them to perfect their vogue, and yeah. vogue well, as long yeah. as they're still walking realness, too. Got you. Okay. All right, James, what do you think? Come out and twist and get chopped for realness all the time. 
chair. No, I think, well, I do think some of them should walk vote, fam, because they're just that fucking good, you know. Um, but no, I don't think they should be penalized because we have allowed that all these years. So to change it up now would be a kind of an oxymoron. I mean, it's not like it's been a year or two. It's been several years since we have allowed this to, to go on and stuff like that. So that's the category. But I do think that we should bring back the realness part. Yes. Do you feel, sorry, just real quick. Do you feel like the, the people they push the people through because they know they're walking to us? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but but listen, I think a lot of people, even with the performances, they're pushing them through. Yeah. You know, because some of them don't be turning it like that. <laughs> <laughs> Stanley said, "Look, ma, no hands." Oh. <laughs> right, you know, oh. <laughs> kids are getting through. With, who who never oh, moved their God. hands? All right, so we got another question. Is there a difference between the requirements or expectations needed to be game legend now versus back in the day? I told y'all this was everybody's favorite topic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, the requirements are different. Like James said earlier, you know, we got deemed in two and a half to three years. It was something natural. Like when I um I was at a ball and somebody called me out legendary, and I was like what you talking about because you know that's something we wasn't trying to achieve you know mm -hmm. jack called me out one day legendary old way and i'm sitting on the floor just looking stupid like who he talking to because mm -hmm. i wasn't expecting that you know now people are pitting out resumes and book templates and <laughs> documentations and all type of stuff you know um paying people and all type of crazy foolishness Ooh. going on with that stuff mm -hmm. um People are always in my inbox. I pay them no mind. Uh, <laughs> people know if anybody, regardless of their opinion, gets any type of ac uh, accomplishment or uh, achievement at the Dorian Corey, it don't matter if I like you or not. If I present you with something, you definitely earned it. Mm. Yeah, there's a big difference in the requirements for expectations to be in the legend. Like I've like earned it something up. But also, you know, there was no voting process, first of all. Mm -hmm. There was no there was no uh congregation of legends and icons to vote on who would become legendary. You know, they even would have legends calls where you could walk and and if you was in a certain time in my time, it was different in the Elks Lodge, but in my time in the nineties and the early two thousands, you know, if you was in a certain time frame of years of walking, you could walk this legendary category this night. You know, and again, if you won, you were legendary. Now it's this debate of um, because you became legendary, I'm going to make him legendary because he's legendary. I'm going to be legendary. I won over her more than she's ever won over me just because I stopped walking for two years. You're going to take away my history. It's a lot. It's a lot involved in this now. And it's it's carrying. Yeah. Um, got another question here. How has the idea of gay parenting changed from back in the day up to the present? Mm. Gay parenting aside from house parenting or just gay parenting in general? Because you know, people like to separate the two. I think it's all, right. all inclusive. But all right, I let, I let the person who um reframe the question um and then push it up. Um what are the current day requirements to be welcoming to our house? I have no idea. <laughs> Me neither. Well, you know, I guess requirements. Some people require, well, you must have a job, some sort of source of income. Mm -hmm. more expensive. You know, it's not that day no more where, you know, okay. you gotta have a source of income. Um, you know, for me, you have to, if you're young, you have to, anybody, go to school, get an education. You have to know the category that you want to walk, and you have to be good in it. You know, mm -hmm. like, or at least to be able to be trained to be good in it, you know. Um, different houses have different rules and regulations, you know. Some are very technical, some are very pristine, some are very child. Hey, come on, girl. You know, <laughs> like, I like you. you look good. Let no shade someone to have you, you know, or whatever. You know, it happens. So it's different. Mm -hmm. Just think about the house that you want to go to before you go there, 
Yeah. All right. So we got clarity on the question about okay. uh, parenting. They said both. Oh. So. Uh, um, well, for me, uh, I had my first gay son in 92. Uh, and they're still my child. So most of my kids are the same. So, you know, you know, I had to separate my gay children from my house children, which you are supposed to. Um, Sometimes the conflict comes in when you have your gay child in your house also. You know, so the gay child feels like they should get extra privileges because they're your personal child inside your house. But you have to separate the two. They have to be time and place for everything. Um, I, I don't know what people are doing with their gay kids, so that's kind of a hard question to answer technically, because everybody, you got people out here 18 with a gay son 17, so mm -hmm. I don't know what kind of parent is that. Y'all the same age. <laughs> I guess for me, the difference would be um, from what I can see from then to now as I observe other people, um, there's no separation of, I guess, levels in a sense. You know, there was a time if that was your parent, you treated them as if they were your biological, how you would treat your biological parent. You wouldn't really be disrespectful. You listened to what they said. You did what they told you to do and stuff like that. Today's kids will, and everybody's an adult, yes, but we use the terminology kids, but everybody's an adult. Um, Right, that's barely a big brother. You know, they'll jump in your face. Like, what? And why? And blah, 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 blah. You look at them like, bitch, I would not <laughs> Keep talking. Keep talking. And then sometimes you look, stop this with you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but today, it's, they pulling out each other, weaves, they macing each other, they running each other over and stuff. Um, <laughs> Mm -hmm. and, and like I already said, the ages are a little bit more closer than they were back in the day. So there's but so much you can teach somebody that's ba that's basically almost the same age as you. You know, y'all are kind of sitting together. And uh, yeah, and I learned that just from my home life, my own father, you know, my biological father, you know, how to be the father. And then coming into the scene, learning from Tony and stuff like that. And other fathers like Roger and all of them watching them. And how I was with my circle of friends in general, because my kids are my my kids are my kids, but they they're my best friends, really. You see me hang out with the same people for almost thirty years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. True team. True team. Um, let's see. Stanley said the status question is a hot topic now because everyone wants it. It's goal upon entry, as opposed to back when we really didn't care. And I've heard that from a lot of people. A lot. Of people. I just wanted the trophy. Just the trophy. I had a lot of people. They didn't know they were getting deemed until they got there. And it was just like, oh, yeah. Hey, Kiki. <laughs> um, Kiki also has a come here. Her father is younger than her, but she respects him for who he is to um, who he is to her. And even though the rest of it got cut off. But see, you because you you respecting the, the the levels that he that he is at. You know, and you giving him that badge of honor to be your father. So you, amongst many others, understand how that relationship is supposed to be between the two of you. Yeah. So yeah. for that, and, and a bit piggyback on that, like um, people like Reno, you know, and Jerry and Adrian, and all them, uh, they were my age at the time coming out, but I was uh, older in gay life than they was, because, you know, I was hanging in the street at 14. I was already in ballroom. So, Tom, they became my children. I was already in the streets and experienced going to clubs and balls and just hanging out in the gay community. Tom, they came out, you know, already had 10, 15 years in the game. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you're right. right. You're right, because the experience would make yeah. you older. Yeah, and you can right. go ahead, Steve. Go ahead. No, no, go, no, no, go for it. Go for it. Finish your statement. I'm sorry. Oh, no, Steve, you're right. You can't parent correctly if you have ulterior motives like having the children. Listen, that is something that has been going on since the day of dawn, okay? And don't let you let nobody tell you anything different. 
The children back in the days was trying to have the young children, just like the young children was trying to have the older children, and the shit still goes on. We, most of us are gay men. And because we run in the same circles, we feel like it's no rule. Age is not even a rule. Not for me. But age is not a rule. You know what I'm saying? If I hang out with you, then it's okay to fuck with you. Yeah. You know, that's some people's mentality, and you see that in their actions. Yeah. And it's not cool to 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 want to have sexual intercourse or relationships with a with a person who is vulnerable and innocent and giving you their trust as a mentor, a guide, a big brother, a father, whatever role or life they see you in. It's almost like being molested. Yes. Yeah. And that is yeah. traumatizing. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, so we have a next question, and um, I, I wish we had gotten this question before when the scene was on. Can someone explain the category fag out for the viewers? Um, a lot of people never heard of that category. Go ahead, uh, So fag out was, again, stuff that people uh, describe now as being non-binary. Um, you know, they wasn't, um, they wasn't considered a man or a woman. They just dressed freely. Like, you know, a lot of kids now have the freedom to come outside, uh, you know, with a short wavy haircut and a women pocketbook and a belt and some high heels and still consider themselves a man, but they like to dress feminine. So that's what Fag Out was about, just being unapologetic you. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Nene. Cunt. Being cunt. <laughs> being cunt. <laughs> Shout out to Nene. Oh. Yes, what's Let's up? Let's see. Man? All right, another question from Annie from Russia. What is the verbal vogue category and how is it supposed to go? It's a reading session. That category is so long. Yes. It's a reading session. session. <laughs> Pull up some old clips of uh, Kelly and uh, Khadija. Khadija. That's verbal vogue. Uh, oh, baby. Watch Andre and, and Jose Extravaganza. You're supposed yes. to be as you're voguing. Yeah. Yes. You know, you yeah. can beat them down at your performance. Yes, yes. Good, good, good ones. Good ones. I remember I remember Andre doing that. Um, um and he's falling out. <laughs> Andre and Ho Andre and Jose. I love, I love Andre. <laughs> Andre and Jose. <laughs> All right. Um so I'm gonna look, go to the next question, Alyssa versus Carmen. Oh um, um and Annie's asking Tim to send her that. <laughs> she would love to see it. Uh, we have another question for you guys. Um, we have another special guest, but I'm not sure if they're going to make it. So um, I'm just going to go to the next question, which is Dante's question. So when you all look over your time in ballroom, that echo would turn me out too. But uh, <laughs> when you look over your time in ballroom, what do you think your legacy will be? Um, I'll start if even one of you actually can go. What my legacy will be? Uh, I don't know. I guess that I was just an all-around people's person. I was a good promoter. Uh, you know, I just I created a lot of legacies out of Philadelphia. You know, just that you know, thinking about me, you'll think about, oh, that was the mayor of Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. AC Doocy. Right. <laughs> I think my legacy would be, um, of course, the father to the fem to the fem queens, to the transgender girls. You know, the girls. I'm in charge of the girls. Charge of the girls. You know, <laughs> the girls are mine. The girls, I protect the girls. You know, I've always, always surrounded myself. Yes with the girls, the beautiful girls, and girls that became beautiful, you mm -hmm. know, everything. So yeah, my legacy would be the girls. All right. Oh yes, and the Icon Bulls for us, and Avernian for all of his amazing events, because Avernian has events down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my legacy will also be the legendary Icon Bulls. Yes, thank you. <laughs> okay. Yes, twin. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Twin got a little situation from earlier. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. All 
All right, Nini, you have another, she has another question. Why don't they have the category tall girls realness? It's a lot of girls that are over six feet that are real. Well, I don't think you should really separate. I think they, they had that probably in the nineties, they used to do big, tall, small girls. Um, I think that ballroom is so spread out. Like again, you might write a category and maybe two people will walk it. Um, but I guess, you know, I like these suggestions. We can play around with these categories and see what happens. Yeah, Fair like I said, they don't really walk it, but I like to separate them too because yeah. there is an advantage and a disadvantage to certain categories when it comes to certain girls, you know? Yeah. Unless you were really that it girl, you weren't going to shine against a particular girl. Like, um, what's her name from Philly, Alvernian? Um, was it Maya? Maya, what is her name? She's still alive? Yeah, tall, brown skin. May, Mia, what was her name? The real tall, she had the full lips. She was a blonde for a minute. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. She was beautiful. She's from Jersey outside of Philly. Uh, I, yeah, forgot, she, I know you're talking about that. She was tall. She was real tall. But, but yeah. she was dark rock, and pretty rock girl. girl. Yeah. Rock them. But it or a big girl. And people would feel like, oh, because she's big, she's that's why she's real and that's why she wins. You know, or somebody that's really petite, like um Lisa Prodigy, excuse me, Muglia. Though, although she was real, she is real to be damned, no question. But girls that couldn't take it were blaming on her being shorter than them. And that's why she won. No, honey, because she was real. Mm -hmm. I want to separate the categories. So give everybody a chance to win. Give everybody a chance to win. You got to get to oh. the ball time, though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> James is the uncle of ballroom, the ideal family experience. How you doing? Exactly. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's go. Um, we got 15 minutes left, so I have another question. Um, that I believe is for um, Jamel. Okay, sorry guys. What is some advice you can give the, to the new leaders of Ballroom? Again, like James said, again, when these new young people are coming into Ballroom, you have to teach them the history of Ballroom. Um, I was having a conversation with our art the other day about certain commentators and uh, why I don't hire certain commentators or why I don't use some of the new commentators. I tell them, this is a job that you took on. You need to learn every history. Even if these people don't come out no more, you need to learn about them, their history, where they came from. Uh, to know these things, you never know when they might pop out of an event and you're going to get on a microphone and say, well, I heard he's an icon, but you can't properly introduce them without knowing their history. Mm -hmm. um, again, ballroom is supposed to evolve and I love that, but you still have to, when people come in, teach them new things like James said. Teach them about some of these old categories, even if you're not interested in them. Get somebody another opportunity to like something that's not popular right now. Mm -hmm. You know, and to teach them respect. You know, again, the, the whole, the I think our main problem in ballroom to this day is the respect for each other falls mm -hmm. so short. You know, you ain't have to like me, but you're going to respect me. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We ain't gotta hang out and do breakfast and stuff, but you're gonna respect right. me. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. I agree. So, I agree. I, I agree. I agree. And like I, I agree with everything I've been said. Also, it's it's again your your parents, your elders of your house, make sure that you learn the history of ballroom, every category, every person that you can. And I'll say shout out to the house of West. At the house of Margella. I can never say their names right. Mason Margella. <laughs> but shout out to those two houses in particular. And shout out to the fathers and the mothers of those houses. Those, I'm watching them like a hawk. Because they are so old school ballroom. And they are structured. They are a tight unit. I like what the lead... Let me say, James is a phenomenal leader of the new school. 
Pay attention. If you know who I was 10 years ago, mm -hmm. 11 years ago, 12 years ago, to whom he is today, as we call mm -hmm. him Little James, and now we call him King James, mm -hmm. pay attention. Mm -hmm. That's a fine example of a mm -hmm. new leader of ballroom. A fine. Vinny, from being schoolboy realness in the house of Milan to creating this, this boutique, fabulous, looking house. It reminds me of the house of Montana or something from back in the days, which was a fashion, just done house. They were done. They would be so done, you know, and, and, and even, oh God, the, the Balmain's, the, the, um, Orishi is so many new houses coming out and they're, they're, they're coming through, you know, and pay attention. The, the game stays the same. Only thing that changes is the players. Remember that the rules are still the same. It's just the new players. If you mm. shout out to all of them, if you if you pay attention to that, you will always know the formula of ballroom. And remember, it is a competition, a beauty pageant. Those are the roots of it all. So, you know, unfortunately, we are, like somebody said, colorism. Try to learn how to get along. Try to learn respect and learn history. And just learn to have fun. Learn to have Don't get fun. Serious. Yes. Um, have any of you thought about or would be interested in writing a book about the history of ballroom? Listen, I got a book coming out. It's called On All the Legendary Children. I said it. If you steal it, I'm going to sue you because it's trademark. <laughs> <laughs> But it's not like a, a, a complete history of ballroom. I would love to be a part of something like that. It's just my thought pattern from boom. You know, I'm working on one. You're working on one as well. Okay, okay, awesome, awesome. Well, I think Garland might be offering some services if anyone needs help. Well, Garland, hit me up. Okay. Hit you up. Yep. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, because I'm getting questions about, you know, if we're going to do this again and so forth. Um. That is our email address for the Capital Ballroom Council. If you have further questions that you like answered, um, please, please, please just shoot us an email and we'll direct the questions to who you want. Um, and then we'll post the answer like on our social media page, or we might even like just record the person giving the answer and then we can share it for you. So if you have any questions, please feel free to um, utilize um, our email address. Misty serve. And he said she needs this book. <laughs> I'm on Facebook, send me a friend request. There I go. Making things happen, making things happen. Opening another door. We like it, girl. Okay. <laughs> Networking at its finest. Okay. Um, everyone, this has been great. This has been so great. I had such a good time. Amazing. Like, you don't understand. Um, thank you so much for spending time with us. I mean, I feel like we could do this all night, right? Just talking about ballroom history is just. The ballroom history is so rich that, um, yeah, this, this, I don't think two hours did it justice. Shout <laughs> out to Al Ebony for their 43rd anniversary. Yes. Oh, wow. Happy anniversary. Shout out to all the houses that have anniversaries coming up. Shout out to huh? the houses that are turned. Shout out to all the houses that are turning it in Main Street, in the ballroom scene. All just turning Lavin with your, with your um, thing with Lavin and and Pose again, and all these other movies that these people, Miss Lawrence for being in Billy Holiday versus the United States. Mm, yes. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's dope. Jack is what, what you're doing for legendary executive producers. Jack is everywhere. 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 <laughs> Jack said it a long time. Yo, let me, yo, Jack has said things so many years ago, 20, 25 years ago. And he's doing them today. That man is the evolution of ballroom. He has him and Andre have created so many categories introduced into ballroom, you know, and they are definitely game changing. Like mm -hmm. I said, comprehension is an all-time low in ballroom. <laughs> Please learn what these words and these titles mean. As mm -hmm. far as I am, icon and legendary or legend. Please understand it. Please, when somebody put up a post that you read the post and then you decide on what the answer would be for something, can't understand what is being said or asked. That is a problem in ballroom. Please go back to school. If you're hooked on phonics, do not be ashamed. Get Google that shit. You know what I'm saying? There's so many apps that can help you with comprehension and stuff like that. We are a society of 
great people of of excellence. Our minds are so creative. We could do so many things, right? We have to get out of our own way. We have to work within with each other to be able to show everybody else what we really can do. Drop the ego, drop the girlfriend shit. You know, girlfriend shit is always gonna last, but you know, pull a bitch in, okay? You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Um um, I didn't know what I didn't know what to say. Like I'm so like, like blown away. Like co-host, help me out here. Well, <laughs> I would definitely like to say, you know, I am like eternally grateful for um, you know, Uncle James and Uncle Al and Grands Racine and Twiggy for coming on. Like I respect you guys so much. I've been in ballroom for since like 2003. I didn't walk as many balls, but I was always the the person to get the bitches ready. That's what I did. And I mean, I think it's a place for everybody in ballroom. Um, and I've learned so much and just like watching you guys do your thing and knowing the history, like it's again, like Kenya said, it was ex it's extremely rich and so many people and things come out of ballroom um, for life experience, for careers, anything. Um, and it definitely has evoluted to something that is, nobody thought that it would go. Um, so again, I appreciate you. I honor you. I respect you. My love is like for you guys is just super long because I feel like without you guys giving what we need, which is the history, um, it, it just wouldn't be. And I really would like to see more of this um, happening so that people can understand where they came from, which is I think is super important for us to grow. Because if you can't, you know, if you don't know your foundation, how can you build on top of anything? Amen. So I thank you. Thank I can't thank you guys enough. Like I, this is yeah. something that Kenya, myself, and Dante have been. Um, we didn't even know like where this was going to go. <laughs> this was like <laughs> I, honestly, we were like we talked Love literally you, all day. Every day. Kenya is like one of the hardest working people. Even when he was, yes, he would want to be talking on the phone while the people were cutting them open on the bag on table. He wants us to get work done. So I mean, I just can't thank you guys enough so thank, thank, you, thank, you, thank you for you, having thank us. You. for having us yes yeah. i appreciate it thank you this is so much fun i remember seeing you all you know as a young sprat when i first came out with jermaine mizrahi and, and 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 johnny and them girls and watching you all so it's just great to get to sit down and hear you all just talk about that history um Tom, I was real pissed from you. Uh, <laughs> we have grown from that. I'm so <laughs> yes, grown. everyone has grown. <laughs> that was horrible. That was horrible. <laughs> Dante? I mean, y'all didn't stole everything now. What else is yes. there for me to say? Y'all didn't, yes. you know, I had a little something after you. Then Jamel went and took everything that I wanted to say. So, I mean, all I can really say is thank y'all again um, for being here with us. Um, and just sharing y'all's history, y'all's knowledge. Um, like they have already said, it's so important for us to know these things. Um, without it, you know, that this is the it's basically the blueprint, it is the book that we look at because honestly, history repeats itself in most times, it can, it can evolve, but it's still the same thing. Like you said, the game doesn't change, the players do. So, um, I definitely agree with Jamel, we need more things like this to be happening. Um, whether it's virtually or when outside finally opens back up, you know, in a conference form of some sort and just any kind of way. And whenever ballroom is getting together in some form or fashion, we should be including history, even if it's at a ball when it comes to the commentators, given some of people's history when they come out. Um, when Alvernia was saying the thing about the new commentators, I was shaking my head because I definitely agree. Um, and I was having this conversation with somebody that, you know, part of their job is learning you know, the history of people, if that's what you want to do, if you want to be on the mic, you got to learn the history and not just not just your girlfriends that are walking down, but you need to know the history of these categories, where it started, you know, who was turning it and especially and start with your cities. If you got to do it that way and start small, start with your cities and at least learn that because um, mm -hmm. you shouldn't have icons, legends um, coming out in your same city and you don't even know who they are. And you're like, um, so and so da da da. And, so yeah, just do your homework, do your research. Um, and I think you'll find a, a, a better meaning um, for ballroom and you'll appreciate it more when you actually do do the research and you learn the history of everything. Two more things real quick. If you're gonna tell a history, don't lie, tell the truth. Mm -hmm. Don't make yourself look bigger than what you were back then because somebody will always tell 
somebody else that you wrong. That's another twisted thing in our ballroom that we do not tell. Some people don't tell the truth and they twist the history a little bit and stuff. Always take things from your perspective, from when you started, or if it was somebody else's story, what you heard. You weren't there. I wasn't there for a lot of stuff that I know, but I teach it to my children and stuff. And like you said, MCs, you are a historian. Like Racine mm -hmm. said, if you're new, somebody's new and coming to the balls, they're listening to you. Mm -hmm. They're learning mm -hmm. from you first. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes people most more interested in ballroom. So like Avernian and Dante and everybody says, learn your history. Learn whose ball you go into. Learn about that house. Learn about the people. You watch videos all day long. You know what I mean? Tell me you ain't learning no damn history. Fuck right. you watching that for? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no shade. I remember I learned who was who from listening to Eric. Because Eric Christian Bazaar used to call you out. And he used to do the same thing else. And that's how I knew, oh, okay, that's what this is. That's who this is. That's, you know, yeah. And I appreciate that about Jack. Jack does that all the time. And everybody's yes. like his long dissertations, but it really gives me my life. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, that's the bitch I need to watch. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And that's why I'm not a legend. I just sit with the legendary and iconic. Monty wants to be a kid so bad. I, Andre Christian. Paris is burning. <laughs> and that's yeah. another thing. Show your children Paris is burning. Please. Yep. Show yep. them Paris is burning. We used to do that. Every time we got a kid in the house, we would make them sit down and be like, you got to watch the Bible. And we would turn on Paris is burning. You know what I'm saying? Even though things in Paris is burning, and people feel some sort of way. But honey, that is a learning tool of the scene that we are in. It is so many good points if you listen to them and mm -hmm. listen to what they say and stuff like that. Black mm -hmm. is burning, There's a lot of gems in it. I, I get it when I meet people who say they still haven't seen it. Yes. Oh. Every time I hear it, I'm like, how, how? Yeah. How? 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 Like you, you could watch it on YouTube, like watch it. Mm -hmm. watch, yeah, it. watch the outtakes. Yes, <laughs> yes. Because oh. they just released some like unreleased um, footage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I was just like, oh. Oh, it was over. It was over. <laughs> it was over. <laughs> oh. Well, again, thank you all. Thank you, everyone that watches us tonight. Um, and of course, I want to thank our sponsors, Damien Ministries, Center for Black Equity, um, Le Maison, DC Black Pride. Thank you for, because of you guys, make this all. DC Health, we have a very great relationship with the DC, the DC Health Department. So I want to thank everybody. And yeah. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The date and the the next show. Oh, go for it. Go for it. Go for it. I don't remember the date. Well, we have we have a couple lineups, a couple a couple of shows coming up. We have, if y'all remember, we did a twenty questions with um Ricky Allure um last month. We're gonna be doing that um at least twice a month. So be on the lookout for that. Um, once a month, we're gonna have these kind of panel discussions. And we have we're gonna um do a panel with um for 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 women's month next month, we're gonna do women in ballroom, all strictly cisgendered women in ballroom. Um, we're gonna do that. Um, then we're gonna do a panel with like all the commentators, all the big name commentators, put them all on the panel, talk to each other. Um, then we're gonna do one with fathers, the fathers of ballroom. Um, then we're doing one in May. I know I skipped a month. <laughs> 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 uh, well, before the before the Father's Day one, we're gonna do a Mother's Day panel with all the mothers of ballroom. Um, so we have a lot of things. Cool. Go ahead. No, I was so saying the lineup is sick. Yeah, yes, the lineup we have is a sick. So super sick and make sure you pay attention and you watch. Um, if you have any questions, suggestions, comments, or concerns, please, 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 please reach out to our inboxes individually yeah. or go on our Email Facebook page, Capital Ballroom Council. We also have an Instagram page, Capital Ballroom Council. Um, and again, you can see that our emails are scrolling at the bottom. You can always reach out to us if you have opportunities, if you know somebody who knows somebody. We try our best. We, we actually do have a space to highlight um, black business, black businesses, and black gay businesses, especially. Um, so we would love, love, love to hear from you, especially yes. if you're in ballroom. Um, yes. I love, we'd love to do a highlight um, for someone or it's people, groups, or whoever. If you have a business, so don't for, you know, don't be afraid to reach out to us and um, ask us questions. Or if you have a question about history of ballroom, we have the, the icons on the on that are on the panel tonight. Uncle Al, Uncle James, and I'm sure that they will answer a question for you. Um, you know, they're not untouchable. I think they're they're very humble, nice guys, and they've been through 
Thank enough you. life experiences yes. to give you some of theirs as well. Shout, shout out to Tim Lenvin for Ballroom We Cares, doing some yes. great work, some great conversations. I'm bringing some things to the forefront. Thank you, thank you, thank you for so much of that. Shout um, out to the question. House of Tishi. The House of Tishi. <laughs> yes. um, Stan, Stanley wants to know, um, how can he get alerts? Follow our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. um, Ballroom Council, Facebook slash, Facebook.com slash Ballroom Council, um, and you'll get all the updates. Um, yes, and he says, Stan, it, it should, it should yeah, ask if you want Because I was just on there, and it said, um, like, do you want to receive all notifications? Do you not want to miss this again or something like that? And I clicked. I don't know how I wasn't already. <laughs> I clicked yet. <yeah. laughs> um, and he says she has a long list of questions. Please send them. We will funnel them out, get them to you. Um, like I said, we have a long lineup. Our, our, our goal is to, even though we're based in the D.C. area and a lot of our focus is D.C., we really want to talk about ballroom because ballroom is an international platform. Um, so we want to make sure, you know, we do ballroom justice and bring ballroom to you in a way that you're not used to seeing ballroom. You know, you don't really see get the chance to sit and talk to the icons like this. Um, so we want to really make sure that everyone gets an opportunity to learn and know as much about ballroom as they can. So when they come to ballrooms, they're well and equipped to do what I ready, Annie. Bring them questions. <laughs> <laughs> That's my girl. I love Annie. I love Annie. <laughs> I was gonna tag somebody for Annie, honey. <laughs> I know that's right, Annie. Let's talk, Annie. We might have you on the panel. Um, again, thank you all. Everyone, have a good night. Thanks. Have a good thank night. You, thank Flowers. you, guys. Love. Take Flowers. care of yourself and each other. Flowers. 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 Yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>